Cliff Smith and welcome to lesson three in my series of Blues Licks lessons. There is some free tab and a free backing track for this lesson on my website and you can download that. Um, if you check the comments section of this video you'll find a link to my website and you can download it from there. Okay so we're going to call this one the four note lick because it uses the four notes that we use all the time in blues. <laughs> This is a blues in E, and this lick is based around shape one of the E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, or the E shape, we call that as well. It's using the middle four notes. And those are the four notes we use an awful lot in blues when so playing around the minor pentatonic scale. So, what we're doing, we've got some techniques in here. We've got hammer ons, pull offs, Bends. We've got two types of bends. We've got tone bends and quarter tone bends, or blues bends. Okay, so this lick starts on the 12th fret of the D string, first finger, and then I'm going to hammer on with the third finger onto the 14th fret of the D string. Then I'm playing the 12th fret of the G string. Then I'm playing the 14th fret of the G string, and I'm going to do a tone bend. So that, that's, that's an A note on the 14th fret of the G string. I want to bend it up until it sounds like a B note, which is one tone or two frets above that. You can practice that by playing the note two frets above that, listening to it, and then making sure your bend sounds the same, produces the same note. So, so far we have. Now we're going to bend that note again, the 14th fret of the G string, but we're going to do a, a quarter tone bend or a blues bend, which is a very small bend, it sounds like this. Almost like we're just pushing it slightly, slightly out of tune. It gives a very bluesy sound. Then we're going to do the same thing with the first finger on the 12th fret of the G string. Small blues bend, quarter turn bend. And for the last bit, I'm going to prepare my first and third fingers, both on the D string. First finger's on the 12th fret, third finger is on the 14th fret. I'm picking the 14th fret and then pulling off to the, where the first finger is on the 12th. Okay, so third finger is on the 14th. Pick that, pull off to first finger 12. The last bit is just two single notes picked normally. Third finger on the 14th fret of the D string. And first finger on 12th fret of the G string. Small bend on that as well. Quarter tone bend or blues bend. So. That's our lick. Now, what we can do with this, it's on the middle two strings here. Now, I can switch it to the E string and the A string, play it two frets lower, play exactly the same shape. What I now have is exactly the same lick, but one octave lower, because that first note I started on the 12th fret of the D string was a D. If I play the start on the 10th fret of the E string, it's also a D, but one octave lower. The relationship of tuning between the E and A strings is the same as the relationship of the tuning between the D and G strings. It's also the same as the relationship in tuning between the B and E strings. So I can play that lick in three positions using exactly the same fingering, producing the same notes but one octave higher or lower. So this is my original lick which we just, I just showed you. Now I'm going to start that on the 10th fret of the E string, same fingering. Everything's two strings lower and two frets lower. And now I can also start an octave higher than my original lick. So that first lick started on the D string 12th fret, D. Well I can also start that on the B string 15th fret, D, and then play the same fingering. <laughs> So now I've got that same lick and I can play it in three different positions to play the same notes but in different octaves. I play all three of them. Okay, so this lick, uh, it works well as a static lick, which means chord one, four or five in the blues, the E, A or the B. 
you'd play the same lick. You wouldn't move it around as such. You'd actually play it in the same position. So what I did at the beginning, when I played the, uh, the lick at the start of this video, you could hear I played exactly the same lick over all the chords and it all sounded good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can use this lick in this little variations in conjunction with some of the other licks from this series to make up your own guitar solos. <laughs> 